so this week's update is uh, small. Just this one box. It should have two things in it, which is um, those things right there. Before we go on with those, non anime, I got the Looney Tunes Platinum Edition Collection Volumes 1, 2, and 3. This one's different from the other two, so I wonder if something up with that, but I guess I'm not paying too much attention or caring or something at the moment. Figure it out later. It's a later project. So first we got Yu-Gi-Oh's XL Season 3. Time to high five the sky. Really dig out the other XL stuff, especially whenever I figure out this is completely released, I guess. Just so that we can see that completed image on... I guess that would be a completed image as well as this. Season 3, Volume 8. And then there's a Gundam Evolve. Released by Right Stuff, okay. Looks like there's 15 episodes. DVD regions 1 and 2. Interesting. Get this open. And, uh, since it's a single disc and it's a DVD, I suspect these are shorter length. Let me look. 120 minutes for 15 episodes. It's less than 10 minutes per, so it's like 7 minutes per, I guess. Be in line with other short. Well, oh yes, this up here says uh, 15 short films, so it sounds about right. Well, like I said, this week's update would be small. This week's anime DVD collection update. So, I've actually, I guess, gotten a decent amount of anime watched. Um, first of all, I finished uh, Love, Chini, Bro, and Other Delusions Heartthrob. It was, again, I've had uh, things about it where I don't exactly... Um, empathize too much with the Chunibyo concept, I guess. Where I can kind of understand where it comes from, but at the same time, I think, whatever. And some of the characters are using it as uh, emotional crutches as opposed to dealing with their issues. And it seems to be, you know, it's the thing, sort of thing that they don't, it's not about getting around Chunibyo, but kind of living with it, I guess. And so it's entertaining in that regard. And for the ending of the series, the second season proper, it was pretty good. The OVA was kind of annoying because it's kind of it's it's kind of it started getting a, bit, a little bit abusive, controlling, and whatnot. It's it did not strike me as particularly healthy relationship-wise. So, uh, so I didn't really like that OVA episode, but I've watched it. I can understand why other people would enjoy it. It's seems good enough, but, uh, yeah, um, I've, it, it just didn't resonate with me. Next up, uh, I watched, uh, One Piece Season 7 Voyage 6 with my friend that I've been watching One Piece with, and it was pretty good. It's the sort of thing where it definitely would have been nice if it continued going, but pacing doesn't feel as, um, bad as it did with the, I guess, I'm trying to remember the name of those locations. But I guess I'm having trouble. Oh well, it doesn't matter. I think it was seasons four and five, I think. The pacing felt a little slower there than it has for this, whereas this, it just kind of made sense. And it was interesting. There's things about it I'd like to talk about, but they kind of spoil where the series is going here, and I'm, I try to avoid being too spoilerish. But it's notable for being the most conspiratorial for this sort of situation than I ever expected it. It's, it was actually ridiculously complex, which I think makes 
for pretty good because there's layers and layers and layers of um, complexity to it. it it's thought provoking, makes us wonder. Oh, I wonder what, uh, why this, why that, what's going on here, what's going on there. Um, of course, it's. I think it's the end of. Yeah, of course, it's the end of the season because I saw that I uh, pre-ordered uh, season eight, volume one. That comes out at the end of May this month. So. Um, and this very clearly ended uh, on the note of catching up on a couple other loose threads for the last couple of episodes. So it's very much a very season-ending sort of thing. And it was, um, again, I, I thought it was very enjoyable. It, it took some interesting and neat twists. But... Um, I don't know, I, I guess I definitely want to see more, because it's... And I guess this is the real difference, is, um, I talked about, like, seasons four and five, and them feeling a little slow, and while this season's content is definitely being slow to completely resolve, it's not in a bad way, I guess, because, like I said, there's a lot more... There's a lot more events unfolding conceptually, making us, the viewer, wonder a lot more. Whereas that one was a little more focused, and the goal was a little more important there. So, um, yeah, I think that's right. Somebody told me that it would start getting really good here, and it started getting really good here. Again. Okay, okay, need to keep going through these. Uh, Kamisama Kiss Season 2, I watched this, and it was actually pretty great. I don't know how well I remember the first season. I'm sitting here trying to think if I do remember very well, but hard to say. It would have been probably good to do a comparison between this and that to uh... I don't know, if I'd watched them closer together I could probably comment how it compares to the first season and your opinions of the first season, but not remembering that. All I know is I was very interested in continuing to fire up the next episode every time all this was on. So it kind of took priority over the background video gaming that's happened here and there, I guess. Although there is a bit of it where that's calming down a bit and so the anime watching gets to happen a bit more. Anyways, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, it, it's definitely shoujo. If you can't tell from the artwork, it looks shoujo, but um, it's... I think it's not as held down by trying to be the shoujos. I mean, there's plenty of shows that kind of realize that the, there are these bounds that they have to try and get around, because if all you have is just the romance aspect, then you probably don't have uh, a lot of other context in which to uh, keep people entertained. And this one just kind of mixes all those elements together. I think they came up with a fascinating idea where it's like, well, we want to see how she manages and handles these issues that come up because we know that he probably can, but there's developments and we want to see her develop as a character, essentially. So it's been entertaining. Um, it did not resolve absolutely everything, so I'm kind of curious where season three will be, because I'm trying to remember if there was a third season according to my anime list, but I can't remember. Well, I'd be looking forward to it either way, because it's actually pretty good. So I decided to prioritize Garo the animation, um, even though this was only the first half of the first season, mostly because uh, I guess some people asked, they wanted to know uh, animation, I was kind of curious story-wise if it had a lot of value to it, and there were advertisements for it in One Piece and Kamisama Kiss, so I guess I watched a lot of Funimation stuff because Reiju Bahamut was also there in Elbing next, but for now uh, I chose this one because I was very curious about it, and you know, it was, I, I thought it was good. I, I think I enjoyed Kamisama Kiss more. I, th I think uh, One Piece and Kamisama Kiss Maybe this, and then Rage of Bahama, and then Love Chingy Bill and Other Delusions. I think that's probably how I would order things mentally. Um, now that said, this series hasn't had a chance to fully explore everything. It reached a halfway series story 
climax, I guess, and I think in and of itself, you could almost enjoy what was their story arc-wise for the first half, but it was kind of paced like it should have been twice as long, which of course it was, and what to think of the, where the characters were at at the end of this, it's, it's that's pretty much the main thing that will make you want to watch part two of season one, and I'm kind of curious as well. Mostly because the characters are actually intriguing, I guess. Where... I, I mean, I, I guess I'll go ahead and bring Rage of Bahamut in here too, because they kind of mimetically compete with each other in terms of being a medieval-centered uh, anime that came out in the same week. Um, and they both have actually really interesting characters, uh, but I prefer the characters in this one maybe a bit more. Yeah. It's really hard to say because it's like the dad figure in this one, he's an interesting contrast to I don't know, maybe a combination of the two guys here because um, he kind of has this whimsicalness to him but a knowingness to him that kind of makes him a fun character, whereas both of these guys, I guess, are kind of smart idiots, I guess. You know, they come up with clever ideas, but easily get in over their head and get wrong ideas about stuff. And they're very entertaining to watch, but I found the, the Garo dad figure probably to be kind of easier to go down, but then when you get with the main character, he's kind of you can kind of sympathize with his rage, whereas this one, which is called Rage of Bahamut, doesn't have a whole lot of underlying rage that you sympathize with until more story develops, and it is these characters that I guess are what rage would be about, and the Rage of Bahamut would actually not be a description of what's in the series so much as how the entity Bahamut raged, and I don't know. They, they, they both had at least interesting setups, interesting premises, um... This, this one is definitely your uh, f found mysterious girl something something. This one would be... Um, I don't know. It, it, this one kind of feels like it overlaps conceptually with something that I've got a vague feeling of, but I guess I'm having trouble thinking of what to express it as. Because it's sort of like, oh yeah, they, they have the armors that they transform into in order to fight the horrors. But... Um, yeah, I don't know. There's something there, and I guess I'm just blanking out on what it is. Because it, it doesn't feel like it is improperly placed in its medieval environment, even though it would be really easy for this element to be. <sighs> Let's see. Um, I know at least here, I wasn't sure how much I'd be able to talk about it, because I don't want to reveal too much about um, how the cast of characters change, but... It was one character that was definitely a very interesting concept to add to it, but if you watch it, you'll probably understand this was one of my issues, mostly as this series got near its later arc, Rage of Bahamut, that is, specifically. Um, they had a character who was a very interesting character who really brought a different perspective to things, um, and you'll probably know who this is once, uh, if you've seen it or if you saw it, but I kind of felt like they went a little too heavy with the character in the second half of the series. Almost like... They were, they were very uh, spotlight-stealing and maybe a bit overboard in that regard. Where, where they became the series, oh, well, we need to do something to do this, to realize this, to do this, and it's neither of the main characters... Well, I, I say neither as the two guys, but she's the main character as well, but she's... Um, I guess I don't know how to describe it very well without revealing more than I really want to reveal, but she doesn't seem like a particular source of insight. And they don't either, but it's like... It kind of meant that the series ended up using this one other character that they introduced as a crutch for a whole lot of the stuff. And it wasn't bad, but per se, but I did feel like it was going a little bit overboard, like it almost seemed like they were the main character of the show instead of um, the others, and didn't quite feel like they had 
built that character up as kind of a weird sort of different version of um, just, just a I mean yeah see, see see it was really weird it's not necessarily bad like I said but it can feel a little over the top and I, I guess I'm repeating myself but uh, yeah I, I did watch both Garrow and uh, Rage of Bahamut and like I said so some of some of the thing the whole smooth guy who says boasts more than maybe he can do even if he has trickiness to him sometimes it feels it, sometimes I just don't like that as much Gene Starwin from Outlaw Star is probably a really good example of being just on the I definitely enjoyed them side of that barrier but he was pretty close to it he was he seemed like your stereotypical boastful main character who maybe couldn't do as much but then the series was like oh yeah by the way he is actually quite a capable individual and this one felt like it's close to that border but for me it was slightly on the outside of it so I guess I took more breather breaks in the middle of it which is good because we had uh, arenas to construct in Terraria but um yeah I guess that's the summary of uh, these two series a lot to think about so I don't have a whole lot to say outside of that, I guess. Well, obviously my anime watching was a little um, better this past week than uh, I think the previous couple of weeks. This next week, there is the issue of um, I need to catch up on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Well, technically I want to catch up on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because Captain America Civil War's official release date is Friday. Now, I've got a little more time than that to catch up to current airing Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episodes because... Um, timing-wise, the friend I would go to watch Civil War with primarily is out of town um, in Las Vegas for a couple weeks. So, really this is just something I need to do before he gets back. And I wanted to give y'all a chance for me to watch some of the anime y'all had questions about, I guess. Or maybe only one of them you had questions about. But I wanted to make sure I had good content for here so that I can... Start Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. looks like. I might have actually not seen the last two episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2. Actually, but since I just watched uh, episode 21, SOS Part 1, uh, I can guarantee that I've not seen these last two episodes. I saw the episode 20. I don't know what's up with that, but it, obviously it means that I need to watch those two episodes. And I've watched one of them, and then I need to catch up on Season 3. And... Uh, Maybe I don't need to do it as much, but Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is kind of the primary TV series to accompany the movie series, I guess. And so the movies build up the most important stuff, and they could probably stand on their own. But Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. tends to be the first series that feels the repercussions of anything that happens in the series. And sometimes the events between the two, um, I, I guess interweave isn't quite the right word, because the cinematic... The, the movies themselves tend to flow on their own, and then the effects of the movie tend to ripple under, I guess. So I want to make sure I'm prepared for that just because it's an entertaining universe, I guess. But outside of that, I don't know what to think about. Uh, we are getting Deadpool next week, aren't we? That's, that'll be pretty cool. Yeah, I, I guess that is where I should probably end the Animated Video Collection update, so y'all have a nice week.